Okay, here on Helpless Interviews, we are going to discuss the AWA. One of those that benefited from the AWA is my guest, Misty Hastings. Hi. How are you? Doing okay, and yourself? Oh, I'm, I'm doing good. The AWA, you are familiar with the bill? Yes, uh, back in May 30th, 1999, I was a victim of sexual assault. So, what happened? It was at night. I was coming out of a club and I was asked to light a cigarette. And as I was reaching in my purse to get my lighter out, a man pulled me into a van. And this is where was this located? It was located in the uh, Five Points area. Five Points in the theater? Outside the theater? Outside the club, yeah. Okay. Um, what's the name of the. the what do you call it? Um, street? The street. Park Street. Park Street. And someone came up behind you, mm -hmm. asked for a lighter. Well, no, they came up to me, asked for a lighter, and as I was digging in my purse, they went behind me and pulled me into a van. And then from there, what happened? Uh, well, I was sexually assaulted by three men, and then... When they started to hear cops outside uh, with the, the lights and the uh, sounds, mm -hmm. the sirens, they uh, basically pushed me out of the van half naked and a homeless man found me and went and got the cops for me. And from there, the cops came, rescued you. Correct. And from there, how did it go as far as like the investigation? Uh, they never did catch them. Uh, not enough evidence. Um, they did get an eyewitness account from the homeless man, but they just never found the van. They just never found them. That was about all the information we had. So, If um, you could turn back time, what would you have wanted happen as far as this investigation? Well, I, I think they did do the best that they could with what they had. Okay. Honestly, um, there really was not much to go on. I'm not, you know, resentful over that. It's, you know, scary. I mean, it still scares me that, you know, they're out there and this could be happening to other women. What would you do if the city of Jacksonville asked you for your help on how to prevent this from happening to another woman or anybody, really? Well, I don't think you can always control what's around you. Just be a little more wary of you know, strangers and people just walking up to you out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of keep your eye out. That's about the best I know. Take some self-defense classes. Yeah. You know, eyes, throat, crotch. I mean. <laughs> yeah, you name it, do it. <laughs> and sometimes I carry hairspray on me. So, because you can spray them in the eyes with a hairspray. And they got those little... Um, Mace things. Yeah, that looks I just, like lipstick. Yeah, I just don't feel too comfortable carrying that. Violence Against Women Act. Yes. How did you benefit from that bill? Well, they gave me therapy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went straight in. Also, where they took all the um, samples of, you know, DNA and everything, they were there too. Um, they really take care of you. They have you back in a separate uh area away from the hospital so you don't feel like you're being watched mm -hmm. and so I hope they still have that program because that really helped yeah um, the bill passed okay. after it finally got reinstated and the bill passed and my mother also she benefited from the violence against women did she? Act through me yeah she was able to go through the therapy for what happened to me that's fantastic. They offer it to the immediate family. So the bill definitely helped women go get the counseling that they need, the help mm -hmm. that they need to get through. And then they counsel your family to help you mm -hmm. and to help them. Who else, when you went to counseling, who else was in the room besides you? Well, it's not just women. There's men, there's transsexuals, there's gay, you know, gay, lesbian. It doesn't just happen to straight women. Mm -hmm. It happens to everybody mm -hmm. on all gamuts. doesn't matter your color. doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter what your sexual affiliation is. It can happen to you. So just beware. 
What advice would you give to a, a victim that if, if you were the, the teacher or the mm -hmm. counselor in one of those sessions that you went to, how would you advise? To know it's not your fault. doesn't matter what you wear, what you did. If you said no, it's not your fault. Okay. I just say that if you're a victim, don't wait. Mm -hmm. If you're a victim of sexual assault, a lot of women wait. And then it's harder and harder for them to find. And I know it takes a lot to step forward. And well, what do you say to the women that are, let's say, if you're in the military, you were raped? Because a lot of rapes happen in the military, mm -hmm. and a lot of these women are afraid to come forward because of their jobs. Yes. Like, look in there, you could look up the Iraq and Afghanistan war. There were rapes going on there. And, and what would you say to those women that are too afraid to come forward? If you can't come forward, talk to someone. You, even though you can't report it, even I would say, I would really hope you would, but if you can't, still go get counseling. Still let your family know. Mm -hmm. T talk about it. Don't let it, you know, bottle up inside. Yeah, because if you do let it bottle up inside and do not discuss this with anybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, even for me, right after it happened to me, I was suicidal. I literally checked myself into a hospital because I knew. And, you know, I got the proper help that I needed for that. I mean... It's not the most proudest moment, <laughs> but I needed it. Yes. So I went and did it. And I wish something like this, something similar to this bill, um, was provided to women in third world countries because a lot of unfortunate situations like that happen there and the women, mm -hmm. the victims, do not get any counseling whatsoever. Yeah, this is, and that's the sad part because a lot of women think it's their fault. Mm hmm. And it really is not. It's your temple. It's your body. And it happens to men, too. I mean, not all uh, predators are men, either. Mm -hmm. Some of them are women. Yeah. There's cases of that, too. So, <laughs> yeah. It's not as often. I mean, it's very rare, but it does happen. But um, it, there's no shame in going and getting help at a, a mental facility if you need it. I just wish that they didn't. It this never happened to anybody. Well, that would be a perfect world, and that would be nice, but we don't live in it, so. Um. What would you um, look back and, I mean, I know that, unfortunately, there's reasons why things happen, but. It changed my life. I mean, some for the good, some for the bad, you know. I had some real low points after it, but I've gotten better, and it's, it's, a, it's just a healing process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody's got to work through it. And this was 13 years ago. Yeah, well, the 99, so, yeah, 14, I think, maybe. 14 years ago. In May. So, and I still have nightmares. I, I still, yeah, I mean, not as severe, but there for a long time. Being in a room by myself with a man I didn't know, I would freak out and run, mm -hmm. you know. Um, even though he was probably on the other side of the room, you know, not even noticing me is still, that's why a long time I had trouble doing interviews for work, being alone in a room with a man, yeah, stuff like that. It really affected me the job wise. Yeah. Um, but it's just, as time goes on, you get better mm -hmm. and those things lessen as you go. It don't go away by any stretch of the imagination. It never goes away? It gets easier. Good. It gets easier. But after 14 years, you're still having nightmares? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is not easy for you, not easy for any victim? No. The, to just get over? Yeah, that's a, that's a uh, myth. Yeah. That within time, they're just going to be completely over it. That is not true. Yeah. It's a life-altering event. I mean... It could affect women that this happened to and they've got children and their relationship with their children mm -hmm. because this happened to them when they were younger or when uh, in the woman's past, rather. I mean, if you had children, I hope it wouldn't affect your relationship with your children, but well, I've known some. Yeah. It's, has that happened to them? 
it depends on how fragile you are to begin with. Mm -hmm. Truly. I mean, if you're really a fragile person to begin with, and this happens to you, it can really break you. And they can get really paranoid and things of that nature. Yeah. I mean, oh my goodness, there's this 15-year-old girl that I've read mm -hmm. in the Maldives that she was sexually assaulted by her stepfather for years. Mm -hmm. And then um, apparently uh, having a cover-up of the rape, the government is, I guess... Um, sentencing her to 100 lashes on her 18th birthday for not reporting it or for having consensual what? sex with some other guy or something like that. And I'm like, dude, she's 15 years old. That's just ridiculous. I would definitely would not have wanted this to happen to me in another country. That is for sure. Oh, God. Yeah. If I was different, it lived in a different country and this happened to me, there, there would be some of those countries are just wild, you know, Making them marry their rapist and mm -hmm. stuff. I just and this isn't this is happening. Unfortunately, this is happening, and I just feel like nobody really wants to get into the root of trying to fix it. This problem instead, they're just not wanting to address the issue. And it just it's they don't want to believe that it could actually happen in their country. You know. So instead of actually accepting it, they blame the victim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're very religious. Mm -hmm. Well, look at, let's say, the priests, pedophile priests. Mm -hmm. You can't ignore that scandal happening in the Catholic Church. And they just don't want to talk about it. They don't even talk about it. They're not even, the pedophile priests are not even being held accountable. Can well, you imagine the rape victims, the children? Oh, yeah. This, uh, they would shuffle around the priests. Uh, if something happened, they would send them off to somewhere where there was no children around. They would never compensate the children and never tell, you know, the congregation. They just got up and left. <laughs> no protecting the children, only protect the pedophile priest by not holding them accountable. Well, the more they're protecting the church than the priest itself. They don't want the stigma of having priests... For pedophiles. But isn't the pedophile priest supposed to be the church, though? I don't know. I <laughs> All of them are supposed to be holy, and they're not. I'm not Catholic, so I really don't know <laughs> how that works. <laughs> Every now and again, when I hear of a really bad rape that happened, you know, in Jacksonville or around here, mm -hmm. that's when I get really upset and I, my nightmares kick in even harder. Yeah. So I really try not to <laughs> pay attention to that too much. Yeah, because um, it, it could, the news could overload you. Mm -hmm. Some people don't have the stomach for it, especially when it's happened to them in the past. Yes. So I try not to really delve into that too yeah. much. Well, thank you, Missy, You're for joining so welcome. me. I greatly appreciate it. Um, you coming forward not only is is a, a good step for you, but it's definitely helping other women heal. It's a very hard and scary thing. I mean, you've been asking me to do this for a couple of months, and I'm just now able to. Yeah. And I wasn't even sure when I started. So. <laughs> and what made you come forward? Because I think it's something that everybody, it's sad that it was even put up to uh, where it almost didn't make it, mm -hmm. the bill. Mm -hmm. It's sad that that even happened. It should have gone straight through, no questions and asked. And five bishops opposed it. So, I mean, that to me was a reason why I wanted to get up and say, this really does help women. Yeah. And it shouldn't even have been an issue for it to exactly. get renewed. Exactly. Thank you again. You're very welcome. I'll see you on, on one of the Helpless News shows. Okay. All right. You'll join me on that? Sure.